Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 55 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In the last tutorial, we looked at image segmentation, so let's build on that. In this tutorial, we are going to perform a very similar image segmentation on a different image, followed by measurements. So let's actually report certain measurements. So in summary, the goal for this video is to come up with the code that actually takes us from image to segmentation to objects and to properties. What does that mean? Like let's load an image. In this uh, case, I'm going to use a steel example uh, or cast iron actually, uh, where the matrix is iron and you have these inclusions that are carbon rich. So we're going to segment this again. This should be a relatively straightforward for segmentation. We do not need to use texture or any other metric. Hopefully the histogram itself would be enough for us to segment this. Once you do that, then we'll convert this into different objects, individual objects, and uh, so that we can go and measure you know, individual object in terms of its circumference, diameters, and grayscales, and all kinds of parameters. So eventually the goal is to generate a CSV file that has the label for each of these, and then uh, the areas, uh, diameter, intensity, and whatever other parameters that you're actually interested in. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the code and uh, uh, do this line by line. So I'm uh, reading certain libraries as usual. So let's go ahead and uh, execute these lines. Now, uh, I, I, I'm just showing two ways of reading your image. If you are a big fan of scikit-image, go ahead and read your image using io.imread and you can uh, convert that to as gray, but then that converts uh, your image into some sort of a floating point. So you have to convert your image back into uh, uh, U-byte, which is unsigned uh, integer eight. So instead of doing all of that, I thought of just using OpenCV to imread, which does pretty much the same thing. Meaning when we run this line on the top here, you can see that we have a black and white or grayscale image of size 369 in height pixels and 597 pixels in width and the values are all unsigned integers okay now i'm defining a parameter called scale or you can call this like a multiplication factor and the pixel size here is 0.6 microns per pixel because when we report we want a report to show uh, units in terms of microns and not as pixels okay so that's the goal here so nothing happening uh, yet Okay, so we just loaded an image. Let's look at the histogram just to see, uh, get a feel for how the histogram looks like. Is it a difficult image to segment or an easy image to segment? It's always recommended. And the way I'm doing it is using uh, my PLT or PyPlot from matplotlib and then dot hist. Again, in about three to four videos, I'll start talking about uh, how to better handle data in Python and how to do plotting and all that stuff. So, but for now, uh, let's look at the basics of it. Dot hist is histogram, and I'm taking the image array and then flattening it. So we just can just plot, uh, you know, flattening means again, converting our 2D to one dimension. So it's easy for us to plot and 100 bins and range zero to 255. So let's go ahead and run this. And if I click on plots here, again, for you, the plot may show up like down here, but in Anaconda, you can choose whether it should be on the top or down here. I like it to be on the top because now I can actually see all the images at one place, okay? Now, so that's the histogram. Again, it's not going all the way to 255, so it's not a great image. We could have done histogram equalization, contrast limiting histogram equalization, but that's, that's okay. In this case, we are only looking at binary segmentation, so we don't need to do any of those pre-processing operations. So I guess if it's a manual segmentation, I would set my threshold around 75 to 80, or maybe 90, right around this region, but let's uh, automate this a bit. So now that we looked at the histogram, let's comment that out. Let's use threshold otsu. Again, I covered this in the last couple of tutorials. Otsu based thresholding, it's just binarizing your image or giving you a threshold value that's appropriate to binarize your image. That's optimal for binarization. So that is available as part of scikit-image.filters. And when I apply this threshold otsu onto the image, all it's doing is when I actually go ahead and execute these lines, it's actually giving me a threshold value. That's it, okay? The threshold value in this case is 93, which is good. So now it gives me an idea to generate a thresholded image. Again, you can do OpenCV or you can use scikit-image, whatever you're used to, but the, but the process would be the same. 
So now let's generate a thresholded image. And how do we do that? My thresholded image equals to my input image where pixel values are less than threshold. In this case, we are interested in the dark pixels, right? I mean, we are interested in, uh, well, I should have actually started by showing an image. So let's go ahead and look at the show image and let's go ahead and plot it. Oh, I'm sorry. C map equals to gray. Okay. So otherwise it, it uses default color map. Okay. So this is our image and we are interested in the dark pixels here. Okay. So for that, I'm looking at all the pixels less than a threshold value. And the threshold value here that uh, Otsu recommended is 93. So let's go ahead and run this. So it creates a an array called thresholded image. Again, because we are using logical operators, less than, less than or equal to, greater than, these are all logical operators. Again, we saw this in the last uh, two, three tutorials, where when you apply a logical operator, you end up with a Boolean array. False, true, zero, one, okay? which is fine. Now we can go ahead and show this image. And if we switch to plots, there is there is our image, which is uh, thresholded. Again, you can uh, convert this to gray if you want. I mean, display it as gray, not convert it as gray, but here it is, okay? So now you can see all my background. I mean, this is our input image and this is the thresholded image. And we are thresholding for the dark regions, which means now my background is all zeros and my pixels of interest are all ones. Okay. So now we are done with the thresholding step. Okay. So up to this part, we are done with the thresholding. One important thing that we have to do when you, our goal is to perform measurements is to take care of these type of features that are touching the edges, right? Because when you quantify it, you don't want those to skew your results. So it's customary to remove all of these edge touching uh, regions. And for that, in scikit-image.segmentation, there is something called clear border. This actually takes care of uh, removing the edge touching ones. So, and it returns an image or an array where the continuous pixels are, uh, any of the continuous pixels are not touching the edge. That's basically what this does. Okay, so a uh, clear border is applied on our thresholded image and I'm just showing this uh, after the removal of the edges. So now when I plot it, again, uh, you can change this to CMAP equals to gray. Sorry about that. I should have done that beforehand, but color images are fun to look at. So, okay, there you go. So this is the uh, same image as this, except all the edges, edge touching regions are removed. Okay, there you go. Now we are slowly getting there. So now we have all the regions that are uh, that we want to quantify. Now, if you want, you can take care of these little things, but then you can go ahead and quantify and then eliminate all the little features and only leave the larger ones. Okay, we'll uh, do that in a minute. So the next part is, okay, now we have a thresholded or segmented image, but we haven't labeled individual objects. Labeling actually uh, uh, labels as the name suggests, individual objects here, okay? So each connected region of an array uh, can be labeled using measure.label. What that means is all of these pixels within that, that feature are all connected. So it assigns all of these, you know, as an object, it assigns a label. So let's actually do that and uh, uh, look at the result, okay? So that actually generates the label. So if I go back here, if you look at labeled image, now you can see that uh, the values are zero. Uh, there are values 60 right there. Let's actually expand this so you get an idea. So value of 60 right there, which almost looks like, uh, you know, one of these uh, images and you can now go down and see there is a value 111 that we saw up there 131 so it looks like we have at least 131 features 155 over there so if i exit out of this you should see the labeled image again is of the same size as our thresholded image so let's go ahead and visualize our labeled image okay so let's plot it and if I go to plots, now this is our labeled image. And somehow the default map for the labeled image looks like this. It goes from dark to bright down here, but we are not done yet. Okay, so we are slowly getting there. Once your image is labeled, now let's create some room here. So it's easy for us to follow this. Uh, 
let's color each label in a different color, in a random color and overlay onto the image. So that's the best way for us to visualize uh, individual one of these uh, you know, uh, objects. So the way you do that is uh, label to RGB. And if you remember, we imported that up here, label to RGB, which is available in scikit-image.color. It converts labels or label regions into RGB. So, and you have to supply what the labeled image is and the original image here, okay? So now let's uh, go ahead and run these two lines and you can see the overlay image in a second. There you go. Okay, so just to repeat this, input image, we thresholded it, and then we removed the edge touching regions and we labeled each of these objects that are uh, uh, segmented and we are displaying these labeled images as RGB. This is not a, uh, an important step, but this is, uh, uh, let me put it this way. This is not an important step for quantification, but this is a very important step for visualization because we are humans, we are visual beings, and we like to see things in different uh, colors. Okay, so uh, if you want, you can save this uh, labeled image because they're always great, and how do you save these uh, labeled images? plt.imsave, go ahead and save it. It's going to save to my root directory. But now coming to the most important part, which is computing the properties. Now, I'll show you a couple of ways. The first way is, uh, in fact, let me just show you, uh, let me save the couple of ways uh, for the next tutorial or the one after that. But uh, let me show you the best way <laughs> uh, in this one, in this tutorial. So. Uh, under scikit-image.measure, again, I mentioned about this earlier, we are importing the measure module from scikit-image, and within the measure, uh, there are various methods that are available for us. And one of the methods that's very useful is region props underscore table, okay? There is uh, actually uh, uh, the difference between, I mean, there is another method called region props, that's it, okay? and underscore table, as the name suggests, it actually outputs everything in a nice table way, so it's easy for us to handle. That's why I like this, region props underscore table, okay? So we are applying this region props underscore table, which actually measures our, uh, a bunch of properties, including, I listed some of them here. Area, bounding boxes, it puts a bounding box like on each of these uh, uh, area that, that's uh, detected or object that's detected, uh, finds the centroid uh, pixels, uh, you know, uh, centroid location, convex area, coordinates, eccentricity, a whole bunch of this. Of these, I thought the best ones would be the label, area, diameter, mean intensity, and solidity, okay? Which tells us the round, roundedness of, this, uh, re, uh, of these objects. So these are the ones we are going to print out or save into our uh, data, data frame. Okay, so the input is labeled image and the image itself. These two are the inputs. And why am, I, why am I supplying the original image? Because wherever the labels are, if I want to get mean intensity, maximum intensity, minimum intensity, it's, it's important for us to supply original image, right? So that's where it's getting its intensity information. So you have labeled image and this image, and then I'm supplying the uh, properties as a, uh, as a list right here and it saves everything. Let's run these lines to see what happens. So now if I go to Variable Explorer and look at the properties and open this properties, you can see it's actually reporting uh, area, diameter, label, main intensity, solidity, all of these for each of these values, 181 of these, that many objects are detected in our image and it's just reporting them as a list which means now we can save it as CSV and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Okay, so I hope so far we are okay. Now, uh, I will spend uh, actually the three, four tutorials after, in a couple of tutorials uh, on something called Pandas. This is a great way of working with your data, uh, almost like, uh, you know, working uh, with your data in Excel, where you have columns and rows, Pandas actually makes it very easy for us to handle data that way. So I'm not gonna go into very much details about this, but just to quickly uh, provide uh, a couple of uh, uh, couple of key items here. Uh, first of all, let's go ahead and import Pandas, okay? It's very easy, Pandas as PD. It's very customary to import Pandas as PD, so, so that we can just type PD dot data frame when you do dot data frame it creates think of it as creating an excel sheet 
okay? Uh, it creates a data frame. And what do you want to fill in that data frame? We want to fill all the values coming from props, okay? That's what that is. And then we are going to print, when I do df dot head, it's going to print the top five rows. So we can see if things are looking okay. So let's run these lines. And as you can see, it's actually capturing all the data as uh, label one, two, three, four, five, and uh, area is, for this one, the area is like one pixel, which is single dot. No wonder we have 181 of these showing up. So we can clean it up in a minute, okay? Uh, but it's, as you can see, this is all in the nice data format. And now I can save this into CSV file, but let's, uh, before saving it, let's do one thing. Let's actually delete small regions. The way we delete these is, uh, again, many ways. But first of all, I'm going to look at in my data frame that I call DF or in my Excel sheet, okay, in the data frame, look for the column called area, okay, look at this column called area. And anything greater than 50, keep, meaning in the same data frame, okay, keep uh, everything greater than, but by the way, you can create a different, capture this into a different data frame, meaning you can create a new Excel sheet again. And uh, I keep comparing this to Excel, which is not fair because Pandas does a lot more and it gives you a lot more flexibility. But since we are used to Excel, that's the reason I'm comparing it, okay? So you could have actually created a new data frame called data frame two and then save this, but, but uh, why save a new one? In this case, I'm okay with this. So now if I actually run this line, now my data frame went from 180 some values to 63, that's it. So it looks like most of the smaller regions, you know, regions that I have in the image are smaller regions, smaller than 50 pixels. So now let's go ahead and print the first five uh, rows. And now you can see uh, all the area values are above 50. Okay, this is, so capturing all of this data into a data frame makes it easy for us to play with this data later on, filter it and sort it and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, so far we have all of these values as uh, square microns, right? Remember initially we said that our scale is 0.6 microns per pixel. We haven't done anything. So now let's do something about it. So now I'm going to create to the data frame that I already have, right? I mean, this is the data frame I have and I have these columns, label, area, and all of these. Instead of updating these values, I'm gonna add new columns where I'm going to save data in, uh, you know, in square microns. So here is a quick example. So DF to the same data frame, add a column called area in square microns, okay? Which is equal to the area column multiplied by the square of the scale, right? I mean, this is area, so you have to multiply by the square pixels, scale square. If it is diameter, you multiply only with scale, that's it. Okay, so similarly, I added equivalent circle uh, diameter in microns is nothing but your equivalent diameter multiplied by the scale. And these get added and then let's print the data frame. There you go. So you have these two extra columns in microns. In fact, if I open DF, you should see that these two columns added. Now I can actually say, uh, you know, uh, DF dot yeah, now you can actually send this to uh, CSV and let's save that for the next couple of tutorials. But now that you have this, it's just uh, very easy, you know, uh, to actually uh, save this as a CSV file and then you can do all kinds of stuff in uh, Excel if you are comfortable in Excel or if you want to do all types of plots within Python itself. I'll uh, talk about it again in the next uh, uh, few tutorials. So I hope you found this tutorial to be useful. And again, let's build on this in the next tutorial. In fact, in the next one, let's have a look at uh, another way of doing image segmentation using the image metrics and then do nuclei uh, segmentation. So thank you very much for uh, being patient in watching this tutorial and please subscribe to this channel so you're notified whenever we upload useful content to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much and let's meet in the next tutorial.